hello, hello, and welcome my Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your seven card draw. What do I need? Shadow read for this full moon in September, waning to new moon in October 2021. I'm your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998, uh, author of Words of Grace from a professional witch, available on Kindle, links in the description box, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angela Lyons, but you can call me Mal, and I'm Mars conjunct Leo Rising. Try and keep myself out of the readings, but you know us, Leos. <laughs> Virgo said, well, Leo Rising is pretty strong in me. Ask my mom. Uh, uh, let's get down to business. If you are new to my channel or these particular readings, I have a Blue Jay screeching outside my door. Blue Jays in the language of birds is the right use of royal power. Let's see if that affects the read or it's in the read. Uh, seven card draw shadow a read one card from seven different decks getting you clues tips and hits from my pantheons of the divine through these pieces of cardboard to you uh, about a specific timeline in this case a waning moon read boop 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 there's your audio visual uh for that uh, a 14 day uh, you know two week dealio we are looking at that well technically not so much full moon in pisces it's in pisces right up until the second it goes full then it goes void of course on monday uh september 20th 755 p.m but that's late enough eastern i'm in new york uh at least at, uh, you you got the day right you got the day to do what you're going to do for your full moon certainly the night before is a good idea uh and then it goes in to aries at 11 13 p.m uh, uh uh the same day right very much the same day uh, that night. Now, two days after that, it is autumnal equinox, Maven, uh, the second of the harvest festivals. So that's a pretty powerful time. A lot of people get together, uh, well, and, and world prayer meditations, you know, that sort of deal. Uh, equinox is equal day and equal night. It's that place of balance. Uh, particularly interesting because then a couple of days after that, uh, on uh, Monday, uh, September 27th, Mercury goes retrograde. Oh, how lovely for us all. And we'll be in Mer uh, Mercury retrograde. It's beginning already. It is in its shadow at the time of this recording. Uh, we'll be retrograde. It won't go direct until Monday, uh, the 8th of October. So there's like a bunch of Mondays in a row there for you. But before that, we will uh, hit the new moon in Libra. That's the end of this two-week timeline. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, the 6th of October, uh, Libra, uh, new moon in Libra means it's the first day of Libra season. Happy birthday, Libra. Sun signs in advance. Uh, 7.05 a.m. So the three days before that, you want to be careful, uh, just because that's when the lunar uh, cycle is at its lowest point, the death before rebirth, the dark before the new, just so to say. Uh, okay, what else? It's general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs. You want to book me for reading? I made a video about it explaining not just how, but what goes down in a reading with me. Booking a reading with Mal. Link below. Um, check your other signs to get more information about what we are about to look at or something else completely different that you need to wane, release, whittle down, forgive, alchemize. You get the language of it, I'm sure. Other than that, all the decks that I read are always at the bottom of the description box, along with my links to Vimeo On Demand. I'm a spiritual teacher, so you can check out my, my stuff there. There are trailers for everything, I think, ex except for the extended reads. I do those too. I haven't in a while, but they're timeless, whatever. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, certainly, both feet on the floor. If you can, focus on your breath, if you will. I will do the same to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace I can from the divine through my nervous system and these cards to you. Please take a nice deep breath. Mm, and I'm wearing my, my star kitty. I don't know if you could tell that's a cat, <laughs> but it is. It's a cat made out of a galaxy, spiral, whatever, stars and whatnot. One more nice deep breath. I got distracted by my fashion. It happens. I'm Mars conjunct Leo rising. Breathe. Okay, style, not fashion. As I call upon my collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters, general assembly, 
the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, as well as the totems and the spirit animals for the Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, watching this video, receiving this reading. What is the dominant eighth chakra archetype from the Caroline Mates archetype deck hovering over their head, affecting every other chakra, every other energy system under that, around them, delivering the lessons and the electromagnetic uh, attraction points necessary to alchemize the shadow to light, the lead to gold, the toxic to healthy, the evolution of their soul, the healing of and integration of the ego into the soul for uh, this full to new September, October. Lovely. The student archetype. The wisdom family of archetypes. I will say, um, I'm an autodidact, which means uh, self-taught. So I'm a horrible student. I, I, I always took the material home and taught myself just how it is. Even tarot or YouTube's. I started reading when I was 12. I just turned 53 on Labor Day. I know, I don't look at me too. So, you know, I'm pretty much self-taught in, in everything. Reading books, eating books. I'm a Virgo. Uh, but not my my favorite archetype, although I love my students uh, as a teacher. The shadow attribute, what is being alchemized here, here's the lead. Arrogance and the pursuit of destructive knowledge. And keep in mind, I taught witchcraft, so I saw a lot of <laughs> in my students. I was like, take it down a notch. Uh, unwillingness to translate knowledge into action, which is certainly more the case, right? Forever students, as uh, it's said in my family, right? It's like you just keep studying, but you never apply it, right? The light attribute, though, is absolutely gorgeous. Humility and devotion to knowledge. Humility. Now, not the Leo's bailiwick. I'll give you that. Humility is knowing that you don't know, and it's actually a great weight off your shoulders. But then again, who was ever given a prize for not knowing the answer, right? So there's some conditioning in there. That's why we pretend to know more than we do in general, regardless of archetype, right? It's okay. Humility is the shield against humiliation, because you can stand there and say, hey, I went into this knowing I didn't know. I'm on a learning curve. I'm a student in this, right? It's a beautiful place to be. Because uh, some people would say whatever they want. You don't care. You're a Leo anyway. Uh, openness to lifelong learning. That's beautiful. And think, fixed fire. Leo. Really like that openness, but with a focus. Like, I am going to learn. I'm always going to be learning. The grace of humility is the first grace and the last grace I write about in my book, Words of Grace, which I learned from Carolyn Mace which is a lot of rhyming unintentionally there. Um, uh, certainly uh, in her book, Entering the Castle, her work uh, uh, about the work of uh, St. Teresa of Avila. Brilliant, brilliant, beautiful work. All right, let's keep going. If this is in your eighth, your mystical power hovering over your head, these are the next four down. The crown, the third eye, the throat, and the heart. Your interior world, the world behind your eyes. The world that nobody needs to know about unless you share it with them, right? Uh, let's see what's going on on your in your internal, your yin internal, your feminine energy, your whatever you want to call it. Please take a nice deep breath. Mm, as I call upon my goddesses of fire. The sign of Leo and the powers of the South. Please, what's going on? Heart, throat, third eye crown for the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, alchemizing the student uh, archetype. This is where shadow work primarily takes place, right? The internal, psychological, mental, emotional world. Will we choose it? Will we not bring our spirit into it or not, right? So what do they need to be aware of going on in their own internal dynamic here? with this student archetype this full to new September, October. Seven of Cups here, jealousy. But I, I want to clarify this because the vibe on this is different. It's it's written jealous. I don't go with co-words. I go, go with the energy that I get. I know the 10 billion uh, literal uh, uh, intellectual definitions for the cards, but it's finding out the right one for a collective. There's a lot of things you want emotionally, absolutely. Things you want to learn, things that you are going through the student process because you want to experience them, 
Perfect example. You want a healthy relationship? Well, be a student of healthy relationships, right? However, wherever, right? If you really put yourself on that path, what you need will come to you. But this is about perhaps some frustration, maybe not just not getting what you want in, in those dreams, right? Seven of Cups, those castles in the clouds, right? It's about getting that you may have to focus on one of them uh, in, in some way to actually bring it into physical form. Because then uh, that's where I can see jealousy. Jealousy is when, yes, it's something that you want, but you haven't quite, and it's not about being wrong, sometimes it's just a timing thing, you haven't like done the requisite stuff to really focus on one cup instead of all seven, right? Uh, and, and to learn and to grow into the person who can handle being that. And then you see somebody else have that. You don't know their story. You don't know what they had to go through to get it. And it's like, right? <laughs> screw you. And it's the deadly sin of the third eye envy. Also in my book, Words of Grace and in Defy Gra uh, Gravity by Carolyn Mace, which again rhymes. So we'll keep an eye on this throughout the reading because uh, there's nothing wrong with having heart's desires and things that you want, the emotional experiences of it. That's why if you look at the Rider Waite deck, right, the Seven of Cups, there's a dragon in one of them, there's jewels in another, right? And, and you can maybe have them all in one lifetime. I'm certainly shooting for that. Um, but if you have that willingness for lifelong learning, uh, it'll be much easier. And and when you know that you're doing the best that you can, I mean, really, heart, throat, throat, eye, crown, knowing that you're doing the best that you can, really, the grace of humility becomes a shield against what other people uh, think or say. It truly is. Trust me, look what I do for a living. Breathe. I know I'm good at what I do. <laughs> I better be at this point when doing it for the majority of my life. Let's see what's going on lower three chakras, root sacrum, solar plexus here, right? These are your relationships, root chakras, tribal relationships, groups, political parties, friends, neighborhood, right? Your national affiliation, your state affiliation, right? Uh, the tribe of the Leo, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. There you go, that's root chakra. Uh, second chakra is one-on-one. -on -one umbilical, if you like, one-on-one -on -one relationships with other people as well as money, because money is one energy field that you have an individual relationship with. And solar plexus is your relationship to yourself, your honor code, uh, your self-esteem, your gut intuition, that only you are getting that intuition, no one else is. So what you're going to do with it? Leos usually act on it. Let's see. Breathe. Mm, as I call upon my gods of fire, the sign of Leo, powers of the south, please, my beloveds, one card in clarity from the mythic tarot. Uh, this is the first reading of the series where the tarot was not both major arcana, so maybe that's a good thing. Kind of feeling that is a good thing, some intensity in those previous four readings. So what's going on that they need to be aware of from the inside out or from the outside in or both of those things? Uh, they appear from the outside or something in the outside that's hitting their lower three chakras in some way with this student archetype and the seven of cups two of wands this is my indecision card uh, it, you know what you want you just don't know how to get there you're indecisive about well well and i don't think it's a question of shadow or light here well unless you have to really really do some toxic stuff to get what you want hmm. <laughs> Welcome to planet Earth for the past couple of thousand years. Uh, this is Jason of Jason and the Argonauts standing outside the cave of Chiron, the centaur, uh, who will uh, give him a, a quest from Zeus to get the Golden Fleece. Jason and the Argonauts, the quest of the Golden Fleece. But right now he's like, mm, yeah, you know, uh, I don't know. Every time the hero gets a, a call, they usually refuse it at first with calamity to ensue afterwards, which makes them take the call. Trust me. Look at the hero's journeys of our superheroes, our ancient myths, even our our theatrical dramas, and you'll see that's true. So it's okay uh, to kind of be at a crossroads. The thing is, is that in this deck, Chiron is the wounded healer, the Hierophant as well in this deck. So this could be a bit more of an introspective going into the cave, uh, doing the shadow work stuff. And look, if you are envious, jealous, you know, and there's... 
you know, the, the, the most diluted form of that. Oh my God, I'm so jelly, right? It's like, that's not really jealousy. It's just goofy. Uh, but then there is, you know, green-eyed envy, key their car, burn down the village, right? So if that's what you're sort of deliberating uh, between here, just chill for a bit, right? It's a sh This is shadow work, right? And giving those feelings uh, the space to breathe, giving them the love that they need, so that they can alchemize from lead to gold. It's just a good metaphor for that. Um, but if there are things that are really, really, really important to you that you have your heart set on, heart third, third eye crown, it's a very heart chakra card here. But obviously involving the third eye, I would pull it put off before pulling the trigger at least until retrogrades are over, at least Mercury. Let's just say. That's just my counsel. You do you. Perfect healing mantra from the Matt Khan Healing Mantra deck, the Ascended Masters General Assembly. I'm not necessarily seeing this as purely a healing thing or a soul contract thing or a money thing, so we're going to ask all of them. Please take a nice deep breath. They're just open to me up to a whole new flank of Ascended Masters, too. So I'm going to ask all y'all, please, my beloved Ascended Masters of um, the General Assembly. You know what this is about. I don't yet. Uh, for for the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, watching this video, receiving this reading, I'll say personally, I'm not resonating with this one myself. I don't see myself as the student. It could be a student that walks into my life. An archetype can involve somebody else who has the the archetype for sure coming into your energy field. So please, what is the perfect healing mantra for my beloved uh, Leonines, alchemizing this student archetype, working with the Seven of Cups within, and dealing with that Two of Wands. Probably more of a choice than a life-changing decision here, come to think of it. I don't think this is going to be a make or break for them, but definitely whether they deal with this Seven of Cups now or later, it could be delayed but not prevented. So what is the perfect healing mantra to help them with this, please, my beloveds? This, no, that one does not feel right. This uh, full moon in September to new moon in October. Illuminating the truth. I am willing to see things clearly no matter the outcome. I know this one. I know all of them. I'm willing to see things clearly no matter the outcome. I call this my clairvoyant card because to see clearly is literally uh, what clairvoyant is. Claire, clairvoyant, to see or seer. Right? Clairvoyant! Uh, not going to do the bookie book on this one. The last two decks are bookie book and I try and keep it that uh, to the, uh, a low number. Illuminating the truth is definitely a third eye thing. Look, if there is envy, jealousy going on, Matt Kahn, the author of this deck, says that jealousy is actually an intuitive thing coming from the subconscious saying that what you want is on its way to you and that you're being confronted with not necessarily your resistance, I'm a little over hearing about resistance, but what needs more love from you, right? What needs the healing? What needs the shadow work? In other words, your soul is never jealous. Your ego and your personality, well, your ego and egos just are. Uh, the personalities, maybe, maybe not. But even if so, it's conditioning. It's stuff we pick up from jump, like not just other lives, our childhood, right? Uh, from our families, our societies, and things that we've learned, Right? Uh, uh, sometimes by osmosis, vibrational osmosis, we just pick things up. And not just from family, from society, from religious structures, you, you know, your political structures, where you live, right? Regional stuff, national stuff. So um, to really see clearly, and I'm just going to tell you, um, and this sounds vain and arrogant, but it's, it's something I never saw coming until my guides pointed it out to me. They're like, People lie to you because of two things. Number one, they're afraid, and number two, they're jealous. I'm like, jealous? What? Like, what would make somebody take the path that I took unless it was a, a severe mystical calling? And they're like, no, it's not about the form. It's not about your hair. It's not about that. It's your freedom. And I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> I am really free to do whatever I want. I mean, because I have an honor code intact and I follow my intuition and I pray every day. I mean, I surrender everything to the divine several times a day just to do these readings, let alone to get the house clean and everything gets done on time in its own divine timing. 
Uh, but I could see how people not understanding, right? People don't see what's going on, what you went through to get there, that envy uh, and jealousy can happen there. Although jealousy is the, the younger brother of envy. Envy really is the deadly sin and it kills relationships. <laughs> it kills uh, 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 finances. It's, it's truly lethal. It makes people do crazy things. That's when you key somebody's car, when you're really possessed by the demon envy. So a wonderful mantra to just do every day but you have to kind of feel it. I'm willing, third chakra, willing to see things differently no matter the outcome. So how attached are you to your outcome? It's a, dis it's a choice, a choice card, crossroads. Let's keep going. What's your higher self have to say about this? I don't necessarily see that there's another person involved here. There might be. Welcome to the party, turned your deck of whispers of love oracle. Let's find out, breathe. Hmm, as I call upon the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, what is the whisper of love for the Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs? Watching this video, receiving this reading, alchemizing the student archetype in the eighth, uh, seven of cups, jealousy, envy, or just having so many things that, they're, that they really want emotionally and being a little unchoosy about uh, what it is they really want and how they want to do it. They may know exactly what they want, but not so sure how to do it. Lots of different options there. So that they can, you know, illuminate the truth, not just what's true, the truth, the more higher vibe, always the truth, truth. So what do you got for them? The piece of information, inspiration, insight most needed. Whispers of love for my beloved Leonines, this full moon to new moon. Embrace your emotions. There you go. See, when you give yourself to feel jealous or sad or, I mean, who needs permission to feel, you know, happy, right? Usually, well, maybe there are people who do need to give themselves permission to be happy. We're Leos there. We're, we're, we're usually good at that. Um, but whatever it is, to give yourself to to your permission, you just feel it, but don't act on it, right? Even if you're like, <laughs> your green eye is burning red. Oh, it's a good image, uh, right? It's okay. It's okay. Just don't act on it. Don't key the car. Don't send that text then. Don't destroy their uh, reputation either with something true or something false, right? These are the choices. These are the things, these are the things, these are the things we are made of. Embrace your emotions. Don't push down your feelings or judge your emotions. Allow them to flow through you. One thing I have to say, I talk about witchcraft a lot, but learning the five element system through the lens of witchcraft, water is emotion. I drink coffee and water all day long to do these readings, to stay hydrated and just stay just right on that, that edge, right? Hmm. It flows through you. You rent it, right? Your emotions the same. Air condensed is water. Thoughts condensed is emotion. This is the process of evaporation, expressing them, right? Taking it from the, the cell tissue into the emotional field, into the mental field by choice. Right? You watch the chakras and whoop, up and out, transformed. Embrace your emotions. Don't push down or judge them, but don't burn down the village either. <laughs> it's, a way, it's a shadow read. See, when people push down those feelings and don't deal with them, then in a weak moment, those feelings all come up at once and they don't see it coming. It's called shadow possession. And then they burn down the village and feel, oh, I don't know what came over me. I wasn't myself. You weren't. You were being possessed by pain. And if you haven't uh, yet, Eckhart Tolle's power of now touches on that quite a bit. Who's uh, the spirit animal walking with you? Either spirit animal or totem. They're not quite the same thing. Let's ask the Divine Animals Oracle by Stacy DeMarco. Oh my God, I love her name. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. This takes a second though. Gotta find that real still point. As I call upon the beloved pantheons of totems and spirit animals for the Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading. What is the divine animal oracle that you have for my beloved fifth house, sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, alchemizing the student, 
Seven of Cups on the inner, which has a range of emotion on it as we have already gone into with this Two of Wands, probably a choice, a crossroads. I don't know if it's a life-changing decision. That would be the Lover's card. Uh, but with illuminating the truth, they may not be seeing things clearly. And if they're willing to see things clearly, no matter the outcome, that's certainly going to make this a smoother shadow. Uh, well, maybe that's what they get from the shadow uh, work here. And certainly by embracing their emotions, their own higher selves have got their wings around them saying, go ahead, feel it all. Just hide your cell phone. So my beloved uh, pantheons of the animal spirits and totems, who walks with them? Who walks with them through uh, this shadow work, this full to new? It's the sea turtle! Dude, it's the sea turtle! I still love that movie. <laughs> well, at least the turtle part. Oh, poor Nemo. The sea turtle, card number eight. Stability. Stability. Stability is the key word. Lovely. Uh, uh, I'm a Pisces moon. Uh, I love me some water things. and are so cute. I live on Long Island. They beach themselves every now and again. And uh, they make their way back in. Okay, here we go. Uh, I have to read this with the magnifying glass because it's itty bitty teeny tiny little type. Uh, card number eight, the sea turtle. Please take a nice deep breath. <clears throat> Stability is your keyword. Operating from a stable base is advantageous. If you need help and guidance, ask for it. As a student, that seems right on. Uh, as you are loved and supported, uh, delve deeply into the study of something rather than just skimming the surface. Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, so they're asking for a deeper dive for you here. Do not push hard for what you want all the time. <laughs> Instead, set an intention uh, or direction and steadily uh, flow towards this. Not every journey needs to be difficult. Needs to be a difficult one full of drama. Apparently they didn't write this for Leos. <laughs> My voice so kind of uh, Peter brady there for <laughs> Leos. Uh, look, the sea turtle, what do we know about them except for hang, baby, hang. Um, we know that they're not the fastest things on planet Earth. I mean, there's a tortoise in the hair, tortoise is land, turtle is amphibious. Um, raised by a nursery school teacher, I know the difference. Uh, but, but there is that thing there, uh, really... It's just the vibe I get on it. It's not just slow down. It is go with the flow. It's go with uh, uh, not just the currents of what everybody else is doing either, necessarily. That's the thing. There could be some emotional instability. I mean, we all experience it. And if you're an empath, doubly so. Pick it up on other people's vibes. Uh, but that's stability. That seems very, very key here. It can certainly be about emotional stability since the element of water is so prevalent in this card, I'll say, for this. Uh, and, you know, the heart chakra is, is huge. Just be careful what's going on in the third eye there. Embrace those emotions. See the truth regardless of the outcome. Because if you can be open to that process of learning, you see how it all fits together? If you're just open to a process of lifelong learning, then it's not that you're bad. You were just at a certain level. Now you see it at another level. There's always a higher truth. That's the other part. Like as high as you go in consciousness, there's always a higher truth until you hit the grand singularity of divine unity. But, you know... No more chocolate. <laughs> you're one with the chocolate, so you're essentially eating yourself, whatever. <laughs> Just totally had a Trixie and Katya flashback. Uh, let me put that over there, because let's get our last card down. The blessing in all of this, right? The hidden blessing that the uh, that comes uh, re is revealed from the shadow work. Our last card down, the from the mystic uh, blessing, mystic Celtic blessing cards. Uh, to enrich and empower, called Blessed Be by Lucy Cavendish. So we got Stacey DeMarco and Lucy Cavendish. I got both sides. This is my mother's lineage and my father's lineage. Uh, love this deck. The artwork is gorgeous. And I actually read the blessing and channel the energy through to the best of my ability. So please, both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath, if you will. And we'll put this all together. Please take a nice deep breath. 
<laughs> we started with the collective pantheons and we will end with the collective pantheons. Please, my collective pantheons of the divine. One card. What is the blessing here that is already placed uh, on the path of, of, in this shadow work for the Leo collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading? Uh, that they may find humility and devotion uh, to knowledge and an openness to lifelong learning. With that, Seven of Cups on the inner, it feels challenging. It just does. Uh, and with that, Two of Wands on the outer, better that than rushing ahead with that going on on the inner. And if they can really illuminate the truth, being willing to see things clearly, no matter the outcome, while embracing their emotions, not pushing down their feelings or judging them, and do that with stability. Do that in a safe context and slowly i mean they're they're not the road runner they're the turtle uh mixing my cartoon metaphors so what is the perfect blessing you would place upon my beloved leo collective sun moon rising venus signs that they may find this blessing and have this blessing throughout this full to new september october a blessing for healing of injury or illness. Now, where do you see this card? It's like the green man, but it's the green woman. Oh, she's a green woman. No, no, no shade to jealousy or envy there, the green eyed, whatever. It's a gorgeous card. So there is, um, there is a blessing uh, for healing of injury or illness. Now, here's the thing. May not be literal. Maybe. General read, comment if you feel like it. Uh, what number is that? It's card number 42. This could be an injury from the past that this situation is healing so often, if not always, it seems nowadays, whatever triggers us in the outside world is really helping us come into contact with some emotional baggage, in particular emotional baggage, uh, unfinished business, right, unhealed wounds from this life and others. You take that in your own belief system as you like. Because uh, it's the compassionate return of the universe to keep giving us the same situations in different forms until we heal. It needs to be healed. That's love, right? You don't you don't want to watch somebody you really, really, really love uh, moving on, unable to experience the things that they want, even when they get it, right? Because it's something holding them back. It's shadow work. Uh, so uh, let me read you uh, the blessing here. I've got my torch of Ariel here. My Rutilated quartz is a lot on that thing. Please take a nice deep breath. Yeah, let's do this for real. <sighs> Speak through me. Card number 42, a blessing for healing of injury or illness. A blessing to bring to you all that will restore and revive you in your time of need. May the bloom of health blossom upon your pale cheek and may the strength of the great old trees and beings begin oh the old trees and and beings begin to flow again through your veins. May the cells in your body begin to regenerate and turn over again and again until all that was not well is no longer resident within the body from your spirit has taken this lifetime okay uh, may the urge to stand again to laugh and dance to move and smile into the eyes of strangers be yours and let the healing come within the breath so that Within every intake, something of the great green world and depth of the oceans frees you from your ennui and lassitude. That's really well written. Uh, may you begin to rise from your bed, refreshed and hopeful, and may the muscles of your body grow firm and long with good use. Let your hair shine, your eyes sparkle, and the strong white bones in your body support your movements. It's a long one. May the nurturing time within the cave of healing, Chiron the wounded healer in a cave, 
May the nurturing time within the Cave of Healing have brought to you compassion for those who suffer, a deeper understanding of what it is like to be the outsider for a time, and a new appreciation of the perfection of form you have been born into. And if you are not the same as you were before the time of illness, let that part of yourself go and focus now on the new being you are becoming and bring this to birth through the support of your body. Allow any habits of thought or body that will not support the return of blessed health leave now, for they are not yours conditioning, and you are here to be seen, Leo, and to be a part of the world. Let yourself make the very most of the blessing of your health. Be outside amongst the natural world. Breathe deep of mountain air and sing the song of your shining blood out into the valleys and the meadows. You are as natural as the flowers, as strong as as the metal beneath the earth, and you will be reborn yourself. When it comes, be joyful, and know this blessing can be worked with and enjoyed for all the days of your life to come. Be well, dear soul, and help others to find their health too by being an example of that shining energy now and always. For the well-being of all with harm to none as we will it so let it be done so motivate and so it is it's a very healing read guys not the easiest one i've seen but look at it right so you're gonna be the student right i'm going i know that i don't know i'm willing to be shown because i got all this going on inside of me and there are things i really want and screw them for having them so i've got some choices to make here. There might be a bunch of little ones, but do I go into the cave? Well, before I go into the cave, let me be willing to see things clearly, no matter the outcome, so that I can embrace my emotions, knowing I don't even understand what those emotions are about. I might think it's about that person, but it's really something that happened in kindergarten uh, with the, the stability and foundation of the sea turtle to be able to do this in a stable way, in a solid way, in a safe and protected way for myself and the well-being of all, which will reveal a blessing of healing from illness or injury, whether that injury is physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, all of that, some of that. May they take the journey. May they have all that they need. Slow and steady wins the race so that they can shine their light and help others heal, guiding them directly and gently through their example for their well-being, for the well-being of all that cross their path and ultimately for the well-being of all life on planet Earth. So mote it be, and so it is. And I say life on planet Earth because where would Earth be without the sun? You Leos, we need you. Creative fixed fire, but you do you. Lifelong learning is a hell of a lot better than pretending uh, and really giving a shit what anybody else thinks about what you know or what you don't know. Humility is the shield against humiliation, the fear of humiliation, the first of the three controlling fears. It's a good place to start. Kick ass read. You need a read? Reach out to me. Links in the description box. You want to read my book? That's in there too. Feel like commenting? Please do like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell because I got clients all weekend long. So I'm putting out these videos when I can. At least you'll know when they hit. Thank you so much for watching. My beloved Leo's wishing you all the very best and the very blessed Starkey says, Meow. Hail, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.